Hi, I'm Mark Tremonti and you're watching Loudwire. Yes, everybody, it's Mark Tremonti here from Creed, Alter Bridge, and of course his Tremonti project as well. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you coming by. Thanks for having me. For some Wikipedia fact or fiction. So I'm going to take some stuff that I read about you, mm -hmm. as some other people too, on uh, Wikipedia. We'll prove it right or wrong, shall we? Yes. All right. Uh, starting off simple, uh, you're born April 18th, 1974. Mark Thomas Tremonti. Right so far. Nailed it. Okay. They don't always get that, so there you go. Uh, it says that you bought your first guitar at the age of 11. That's right. That's true. That's was right. it with the, what, what kind of guitar was it? It was a Tara, um, T-A-R-A. It was an imitation Les Paul, black. That's, that's exactly what I wanted. It was my, uh, my buddy's guitar and he sold it from, to me for 10 bucks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that, that allowance money went yeah, to good exactly. use then. Uh, it says when you were 15, your family moved to Orlando where you enrolled in Lake Highland Prep School. Mm -hmm. uh, and then during this time, your mother was diagnosed with lupus, which yeah. left you, it says, uh, which left you devastated. Yeah, I mean, she had, she had lupus for a long time. Um, she, she had finally, she had, she died when she was 54, but that was from a, a brain tumor, but she was sick for um, all throughout high school, and yeah, it, was, it was terrible. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that. It's, it's awful for anybody. Um, from 93 to 95, uh, Creed was known by its original name, Naked Toddler, and the band changed its name to Creed at bassist Brian Marshall's suggestion. No, nah, we were we were never Fiction. called. Yeah, we were never called Naked Toddler. You weren't. No. That's like a very heavily believed yeah, thing. Yeah. No. What happened was um, we didn't. Uh, if we were going back between names, and um, I think we had had some kind of. I would think we were having some drinks or something. Like, <laughs> let's just go through the newspaper and. Uh, and whatever the first thing that comes up will be our name for tonight's gig, just as a funny thing. And then we open the newspaper. It was Naked Toddler Found in uh, What Bush, newspaper are you reading? Tallahassee. <laughs> Tallahassee uh, oh, my God. <laughs> so I guess somebody was jogging, and there was some kid crying, and that was the headline. So <laughs> that was the joke. But... Uh, <laughs> In this day and age, you can't have a name like that. <laughs> no, it, not the best name to put on shirts no, either. No, no. Oh, I, I was thinking that may have been like a Nirvana, never mind. Uh, right. But, yeah. All right, that's fiction. That's a good one to prove wrong. Since Creed initially struggled to get gigs in their hometown because nobody wanted to hear rock bands, so you would set up your own shows at family restaurants. No, that's not true. <laughs> I thought I really wanted that to be true. We, we did play at a restaurant, um, but it was just a, it was a big restaurant that had live music, you know, so okay. um, we played a lot of bars. Um, back when we were in college, there was a lot of rock bands playing, um, but I think it was, uh, I can't even remember the name of the place, but we used to get gigs there, and they paid us a few hundred dollars to play every nice. Thursday or whatever it was. So That's yeah. not a bad deal. Yeah. I was totally thinking of like a Denny's or like no, Friendly's or something. No. Just like, oh, that's amazing. It's kind of like restaurant during the day, bar, that, hang out at night. That makes a little more yeah. sense. Uh, it says before Wind Up Records signed Creed that a total of 14 labels had passed on the band. No. 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 <laughs> more fiction. No, no, uh, no rejection letters. Not we really? got rejected by. Uh, we were we were being looked at by Atlantic Records, who passed. Um, and when you're a young kid, you like screw Atlantic for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, and then you had Cherry Cherry Universal Records were looking at us. Um, but before anybody else made an offer, Wind Up flew down to see us and made an offer immediately. They just came down and after the show, sat us down and started talking about putting deals together. So. Awesome. And then uh, when they put the deal, the contract together, Scott and Brian, uh, Scott Staff and Brian Marshall signed the contract in blood. And I'm like, they were cutting themselves with like a rusty piece of. I'm like, I'm not. That's always smart, right? And, uh, <laughs> they had to, they had to reprint up the thing and re-sign it because <laughs> they, they wouldn't accept it. They wouldn't accept it. Oh well, that's meaningful that's not still. Yeah. Wiki. No, add that. Uh, 
I'm not sure if you're the best person to ask for that, for this, mm -hmm. but I was fascinated by this. The song Higher mm -hmm. was written after Scott Stapp used lucid dreaming to stop a recurring nightmare <laughs> he had been experiencing where he was being pursued and killed by a gunman after hiding under a bridge. Wow. When he studied lucid dreaming and tried the technique, he was able to escape the gunman. After that, he wrote the lyrics for Higher and he never had the dream again. Wow, that is definitely fiction. Um, <laughs> that's uh, this, awesome. is a, this is a really good episode that's so far. That's a good one. Hire actually was, uh, uh, gosh, we used to do these things where we would play shows and um, Scott would always have a fun time putting us all on the spot and we'd only be in front of 50 people but he'd be like, we're going to write a song on stage everybody. And all right, Mark start a riff or Scott start a drum beat and we started playing and uh, for some reason I went to the the higher um, chord progression and Scott sang the higher chorus and then I think we had we had taped all of our shows so we could listen to them afterwards and wow. um, uh, we had that on tape so we were like you know what higher that song we did today was pretty cool let's work it out so it, uh, it made the second record it didn't even Damn. go on the first records when we were doing that it was way before the, the first album it just took us years to go back and listen to our old tapes and be like let's let's work on that idea Wow. So higher began began with improv on improv, stage. Yeah. Damn. All right. During the summer of 2000, bassist Brian Marshall began a spiral into alcoholism and addiction. Uh, while under the influence, he threatened to beat you up, began missing band obligations, and attacked Scott staff both verbally and online. No, he never threatened to beat me up. Um, fiction again. Fiction. Um, Brian, me and Brian never got physical. It, we came close one time, but that was after we got back together on the reunion thing and he had been drinking and he kind of pointed the finger at me and Scott like, why didn't you protect me and keep me in the band? And we're like, dude, you were saying you were too drunk to make it to the airport to go to the American Music Awards. How are we supposed to, <laughs> you know? Oh. So he put a little blame on us and we kind of got into an argument, but we're all past that. But uh, I remember being on the bus once where uh, I was, it was in the morning, probably like 10 o'clock in the morning. I was still sleeping from the show the night before. And all of a sudden, the bus starts rocking. <laughs> and I open my curtain, and I see Stapp jumping on Brian in the back lounge and fists flying. And, and I jump out. I'm in my boxer shorts get, trying to pull Scott off, getting kicked by boots. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, there's, oh, boy. It was, uh, nobody got hurt too bad. Wow, okay. <laughs> We're sent a lot of things straight here. This is all they they underplayed that one. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Alter Bridge asked to be released from the Wind Up Records label after the release of One Day Remains in two thousand four, but your request was consistently declined until April two thousand six. Um not to no, it wasn't two thousand six. We had to um when we came out with our first record and um, you know it had it had moderate success. I mean, today's day and age, it had huge success. But back then, with the Creed stuff, um, they were expected millions of records. When it didn't have that, it wasn't their big cash cow. It seemed uh, we'd hear rumors that they're pulling singles and they're not doing this and they're sitting on the album, and that just drove us crazy. And we had to um, come to a deal where we bought off of the record label. Um, Oh, which uh, which is still we're still indebted to that loan to this day. So we try and oh, pay it boy. off little by little, and it's taken us eight years of chipping away at that stone. Um, that sounds like a nightmare. But they really they really screwed us over hard, and uh, we're still paying for it. Um, but it was either our career or be, you know, either either take this huge financial risk or be stuck with a record label that's not going to work your album, so yeah. our was career was way too important. Uh, it says that uh, AB3, as a loose concept album dealing with darker lyrical themes including struggling with faith. AB3? Uh, yeah, well, Miles, um, Miles doesn't believe in God or, you know, mm. uh, he's, uh, I think his, his dad's a priest or a preacher or, or um, I'm not sure, but uh, he had kind of grew up, I think, believing or trying to believe, and then as he grows grows up, he just becomes more cynical and more just like, uh, yeah. he thinks it's all just, you know, fairy tales, you know. So, um, 
Me, on the other, on the other hand, I, I don't believe in organized religion. I don't believe what is written in the Bible. I don't, I don't believe there was a Noah's Ark and all, you know, some of these things. I just, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, but I, I believe, I have, I have a, my own beliefs. I believe there is some sort of God, a benevolent God, but, uh, but me and, so one of our songs on AB3 was me and Miles kind of uh, speaking to one another about our beliefs and him being this, nope, nothing in the world exists at all. Me being like, maybe there is something. <laughs> maybe, yeah. I don't know for sure, but hopefully there is. So, uh, yeah. So would you consider yourself to be an agnostic, I suppose? Um, I, I, I believe in my own version of God, nobody else's. I believe in what's in my brain. I don't think there's another person in the world that has the same views I do. Mm -hmm. I don't, like, so when my, um, when you become a parent and you have to get your kid involved in, in religion and stuff, you know, I feel it's my obligation to put them in the same church that I was in as a kid, but I don't necessarily sit there and believe you feel it's important to allow them to make their own decision. Make their own decision, yeah. you know. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the fifth Creed album, or a fifth Creed album rather, was expected in late 2011 or 2012. Uh, however, relations between yourself and Stapp uh, cooled, and the band, uh, the album, was abandoned with the future of the band uncertain. Yeah, you know, I think it came down to one lunch. I was sitting and eating, and Scott came up and said, "Hey, so what are your plans for?" Early next year, I said, "Well, well, you know, I'm we're going to the studio with Alter Bridge." And he said, "Really?" And then from that moment on, he just mm. we didn't speak. We're on stage, didn't look at one another, didn't. That was it. That so since then, it was just the only time we spoke was when uh, he yelled at me for for that. So yeah, is that a, a sort of a tense thing when you're on stage? You know, is it hard to oh, yeah, really so appreciate the full? crowd or just the full experience when you're kind of purposely going I'm not going to look at him. Yeah, it's not it's not enjoyable. That's why Creed broke up. You could be, you know, when Creed broke up, we were um, we were doing very well and it was hard to kind of make that decision of being like is it worth this feeling like this every day, you know? Is it worth being uncomfortable, you know? And it wasn't. And uh, so when we got back on tour and I started seeing all that come back, I was like, you know what? Um, this isn't, uh, this is, we're just going through the same thing we went through before, so we haven't, uh, you know, I think at some sound checks on tour we had put some songs together, but since we had that one lunch conversation, everything was stopped. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you for playing our game. Cauterize coming out this summer. Buy it. Listen to this man shred. Mark Tremonti, everybody.